you know, it's always a good thing to try and put yourself in someone else's shoes uh, and understand where they're coming from. And in this case, let's put yourself there for a second. Okay. Put, put yourself in the situation of you just decapitated your mother. <laughs> oh, okay. okay. Put yourself there. Where are there. you going with this one? What would you do when the police arrive? What would you, what would the natural thing be to do after you decapitated your mom? This is not a hard one to think about or put yourself in this person's shoes, I'm sure. Okay, but wait a second. <laughs> here's here's my concern. Here's, here's, I've got many concerns, but this is the concern that I've brought up time and time again yeah. when we've talked about decapitating. And I think the late, the last time that we talked about this was Taylor Shabiznis, the one in Wisconsin Ooh, where yeah. she decapitated. Yeah, Shabiznis. I want to know what kind of physical shape do you need to be in to do that? Because it's difficult. I would think. I would think. I don't know. So I'm often wondering, like, as I'm, you know, like, you know, we're a little bit removed from Thanksgiving here, but carving a turkey is not an easy thing to do. No, it so, takes a little bit of a little bit of uh, uh, elbow grease, if you will, to uh, to get in there with the turkey. Uh, exactly. Well, in this case, in this story, a New Jersey man who allegedly decapitated his mother, he decided to sing a hymn when the uh, officers came running in. Because why not? You know, I'm curious as to what song it is. I'll let everyone kind of guess for a little bit because I don't even know myself. But we'll we'll get to that. Does it tell us what the hymn is? Um, I'm hoping it does. Was it Jesus Loves Me, This I Know? Was it? I don't know. Yes. Oh, oh, there we go. You spoiled that one. Sorry. In a horrifying incident that's left a community in shock, a New Jersey man, Jeffrey Surgent, uh, allegedly decapitated his mother, 74-year-old Alexandra M. Surgent, before being discovered lying naked on top of her headless body. Again, probably another part of the whole equation of what do you do when you decapitate your mom? Take your clothes off, lie in her headless body. Seems like a natural thing to do. Ugh. The disturbing event unfolded in a public housing complex in Ocean City, casting a dark cloud over the neighborhood. Yeah, that might, uh, that might be one of those difficult ones to sell now. According to authorities and a probable cause arrest affidavit detained by WABC and the press of Atlantic City, the gruesome incident occurred on a fateful Friday. Jeffrey Surgeon placed a call to 911, revealing that he was bipolar and had just committed matricide. I didn't know that that was a word. Does that, does that yes, mean? Yes, um, like matronly meaning you, mother. You killed woman. your mom. There's a name for it, matricide. Yeah. I did not know that. But we learned a new murder word today, matricide. Yes. You just do a podcast called Matricide and some of the people killing their mom. When law enforcement officers arrived at the scene, they were met with a horrifying sight. Sergeant was found naked and covered in blood, lying atop his mother's headless body. As they proceeded to handcuff him, Sergeant reportedly confessed to the murder, expressing remorse for his actions. Shockingly, he began to sing the hymn, Jesus Loves Me, during the arrest, as stated in the affidavit. So what is it? Jesus loves me. This I know. Or the Bible tells me so. Yeah, that one. If he hollers, let him go. <laughs> that, wait, no, that, that's, that's different. That's a uh, that's a different nursery rhyme, I believe, for yes. like, uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> he hollers, let him go. Jesus loves me, E-I-O. Right? Isn't that how? Mm. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. For the Bible tells me so. That, that's how it goes. I remember yes. pounding, having that one pounded into my head. Uh, yeah, prosecutors have since charged Jeffrey Surgent with murder, possession of a weapon uh, for an unlawful purpose and unlawful possession of a weapon. Notably, Surgent has a documented history of mental illness, shedding light on the complex and tragic nature of the case. The victim, Alexandra M. Surgent, was described by her family as the greatest grandmother in the world. I like it when people die and then people speak of them in such grandiose terms. And it makes no. me, and it makes me wonder. <laughs> this is horrible. Someone's dead. And of course you you know, oh they were just the most best at this or that. And like, cool. Were they really? <laughs> or or are we just like really inflating what they were in life because they're dead? Because it seems we do a lot of that. I'm not doubting she was probably a great grandmother. If someone's going to say that, you probably were. Cuz a lot of people when they die they're like, yeah, They'll be missed. They're a great person, yeah. They'll be missed. Not even that. Just well, it's it's hard to talk poorly of the dead. I mean, I, I 
I, of I course, know. after my father died, he was just a horrible human being. I, I never once said anything positive about him. I wasn't going to yeah. I wasn't going to sugarcoat anything, I'm, which yeah. is why I did not write the eulogy. Sure, so. sure. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. I don't really have a huge I, I wouldn't talk ill of the dead if they were a good person. You know, and I'm not saying that Alexandra here is a bad person by any means, uh, but if they're a bad person and they're dead, I have no problem talking ill about the dead. It's just, it's like, what, what, what did they do? What was their plight in life? Were they a good person? Great. Let's talk good about them. Let's, let's re remind, remind, remember those things. If they were a shitty human being, let's remember those things too. Let's not, well, you exactly. know, not pretend they were something they weren't. Bingo. <laughs> Again, not saying Alexandra M. Surgent was a bad person, just kind of an observation on how people do that. Uh, in their time of grief, her family has turned to crowdfunding for support. What did the world do before crowdfunding? <laughs> On a GoFundMe page, her grandson, Chase Surgent, penned a heartfelt plea. Our grandmother was murdered by our uncle, Jeffrey Surgent. She lived with and helped us with our day-to-day -day lives. Without her, we can't afford rent or food, and we cannot pay for her burial or cremation. Oh, she was oh, that's awful. She was 74. Uh, and, okay, well, how old's the grandson? Because, I mean, this woman was 74 years old. Were you relying on the 74-year-old for everything? Sounds like it. And I wonder how old the son was. Let me look him up. I was just looking up Jesus Loves Me, so give me a second here. <laughs> it's been a while. Yeah. Just, I wanted to see the lyrics. Let's see, Chase. Um, so Jeffrey is 46, so the grandkids are probably teens, maybe? Uh... Yeah, so the son is... 46 she's 74 it's about right ish yeah oh it's just awful it is uh it is awful uh the uh ocean city community has been left to disbelief by this gruesome incident janice powers who was visiting her father in the building where the incident occurred shared her experience with new york abc affiliate wabc saying i went to go do a load of laundry and it's on the second floor and they had everything marked off and blankets. I was like, oh, my gosh. Powers recounted she had met Jeffrey Surgent before and described her interactions with him as ordinary, saying, we met at the we went to the barbecue. We just played with the kids. He was really nice. I don't know what to say. It was weird. The investigation into the tragic and chilling case continues. Lots of questions surrounding the motive of the extent of Surgent's mental health issues. Uh, I'm going to guess there was a lot of them. I'm going to guess there was some sort of yeah. psychotic break here or some sort of ongoing problem or undiagnosed problem. Uh, people don't just, you know, decapitate mom and get naked and lay on top of her body. No, something definitely broke down here. And I just looked at the GoFundMe. They're at about, they're less than $5,000. Goal was 15000 There's been 80 donations. Um, I just... Something something just isn't clicking here. I'm just not. Something doesn't feel right about this story. Uh, I I don't I, I don't know. I mean, I, the the concept that I mean, we go to websites and and give money like that to I don't know stories. You know, I don't know. I mean, I, I feel bad for you know, people and things of this nature, but it's like still I don't know. You're kind of. I'd like a little more, a little more uh, faith that uh, it's not going to be used for some sort of ill purpose or yeah. just trying to collect money on uh, the back of a dead person. And I feel like that happens too much, quite honestly. It does. It does. And I, I don't doubt that there is I don't know you know, what the case is financial here. hardship here. Yeah. I don't know what the case was here, but I don't know. Through most of life in society when this sort of shit happens, you have a, a death in your family, regardless of who did it or how it happened. So people die. She was 74 likely to happen at some point in the not so distant future. Um, I don't know. Uh, the we're destitute now without this person. I don't know. Really? Am I, am I cold and heartless for saying that? Really? Well, I, I think it's, you know, they may have just been living with her and she's living on Social Security or her retirement. Yeah. It doesn't say what she did for a living. So without yeah. her, everything falls down the tubes. But, you know, and, and dad, dad being the one who did this, yeah. 
um, having mental illness, he probably couldn't provide. So she might have been the main provider. That's and true. Now yeah. the kids are screwed. Yeah. Dad's oh. going to be in jail. And yeah. now what? Well, if the kids are nearly adults, I think you can become an adult. Uh, I don't know. Like, I don't know how old the kids are. The thing is, the kids started this GoFundMe thing. Do we do we know how old the kids are? If they're little kids, I I feel for them. If we're talking about adults here, okay, time to go be grown up now. This is horrible. It's absolutely horrible. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't know. I, uh, I yeah, think and it doesn't say how old the kids are. It's so. a weird world that we live in, uh, where when tragedy strikes, the first thing that so many do is set up a GoFundMe, um, and in some cases, totally makes sense. Maybe it does here. I don't know. I, I just am always kind of weirded out and very cautious about them. Yeah. And I think that's a, a healthy amount of skepticism sometimes for these things too. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, don't know. I haven't vetted it. I, I really don't have opinion specifically on this case, more so speaking in a broad term of, hmm, I don't know, things that make you go, hmm. Uh, clearly there's, there's probably a lot more to the dynamics of this whole case than, than we are aware of. Um, again, not for us to judge or know, but I guess when when asking for money, it, it's good to know what exactly you're 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 going for and, and where that money is going towards. Absolutely. But uh yeah. Well, there you go. Now we know uh how this individual reacted after they decapitated mom. Jesus loves me and get naked and lay in mom. Sounds like another Makes sense. It's another, the American way. Another day in a Mr. Rogers neighborhood. Sick of the ads? We are too. Start listening with no commercials now and get access to all of our episodes in advance of everyone else. Become a True Crime Today Premium Plus subscriber on Apple Podcasts. Search True Crime Today Premium Plus on Apple Podcasts or go to our podcast page and sign up now. True Crime Today Premium Plus. Sign up now.